live. How's it going, everybody out there? We are here with Amelia Kincaid. How are you doing? Uh, I couldn't be any better. <laughs> I'm in Las Vegas. It didn't get any better than this. Yeah, especially uh, with nothing going on in the world right now, it's nice to kind of get away and do some fun stuff. Huh? Yeah. Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> Good night. So you're from, uh, which part of Texas are you from? Um, I was originally from Denton, Texas. Okay. It was called Dinky Denton. Dinky Denton. Dinky Denton. <laughs> and then we moved to Monroe, Louisiana. Okay. Oh, wow. Louisiana, if you're from down there. And uh, then I um, I spent more years than I care to count, because it will date me, <laughs> in in Los Angeles. Okay. Los Angeles. Yeah. What, um, so is that, where, uh, is that where you started kind of like doing your movie thing or? Oh, God. yeah. In, yeah. In, in L.A.? Yeah. And then, um, uh, cause you also did, uh, you were a professional dancer, right? I started out that way. Okay. So I had gone to, let's see if I, I can shout out to all of them. <laughs> Oklahoma City University. OU in Norman. I spent a summer at Gus Giordano's in Chicago, right out of high school. Oh, wow. I graduated from Interlochen Arts Academy in Michigan. Oh, wow. Studied with the New Orleans Ballet. Oh, wow. And uh, when I got to Los Angeles, I was a dancer. I was strictly a dancer. I was a balletically trained modern dancer. Uh -huh. And that's all I wanted to do. And three weeks after I got there, this is actually an incredible miracle story. I should back up and tell you the story. Oh, go this ahead. is such an incredible yes, story. Yes, yes, we'd love to hear it. So the books that I write now, my six books are about consciousness and psychic ability and envisioning things and okay. they, they come to be and how you can use that to help guide your animals and hear your animals. And, and in Africa, I work with elephants and lions and holy smokes and cheetah. That's and awesome. Gorilla and great white sharks. Oh, wow. And penguins and cobra. No kidding. And black mamba. What? And, and in Europe, it's Olympic show horses, and uh, everything, everything under the sun, from parrot, ferret, hamster, eagle, owl, hawk, kangaroo. Everything. <laughs> That's awesome. So, th on that theme, I mean, I'm going to make a little thread here, a through line of psychic ability because i want to hear if this happened to you guys i'm sure that it has i think it happens to everybody okay. at least once in their lives and it's proof that when you want something to happen you mm -hmm. have to love it into being people always ask me about night of the demons one about the the music i picked the song stigma oh, wow. oh. no it was not possible to get that song you know the band would it, the, the company would never give us rights to that song. Yeah. And we got the rights to that song. That was just kind of a magical miracle. Mm -hmm. But I was back in Oklahoma when I was 18 in college. And my favorite band was the Stray Cats. Okay. Now, y'all are a little young to know. I know the, the Stray, Stray Cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yes. know, that was, rockabilly was this, incredible thing uh -huh. nobody mm -hmm. was doing anything like that yeah then all of a sudden you know here's brian zetz are doing something so fresh and it's it's kind of punk mm -hmm. but, but really cool yeah yeah and different and fun cheerful and a lot of a lot of the punk stuff in the eighties. In retrospect, it was cheerful. We thought we were totally badass, <laughs> <laughs> but compared to what's going on now, we had hair sprayed pink and green and glitter on our eyes. Yeah, and, you know. You yeah, know yeah. What I mean. So I would look in a mirror and pretend I was the lead in his next rock video. <laughs> That's cool. And I did it every night. Okay. Oh wow. In Oklahoma City. Now I was as far. Now I was in Norman, Oklahoma. I was as far from Hollywood as anybody could ever, ever get. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was about maybe February of that year, and 
every night I'd look in the mirror and pretend I'm dancing to a Brian Setzer video. <laughs> and then I hear the bands coming to town. Uh oh. So I wrestled up my most beautiful, wildest girlfriend to go with me. <laughs> okay. We go to Oklahoma City. And this is one of those moments. This is the, the God is watching moments. Mm -hmm. After the concert, we get in an elevator. Me, my beautiful friend, and Brian Setzer. Wow. No way. He walks into the elevator and looks at us and says, where do you go to party around here? And we I, we didn't know. We said something. <laughs> and, and then we didn't go because we thought, oh, he's never going to show up. He's not really going to show up. It was in the paper the next day that he showed up. Oh, oh no. no. So I make my way to Hollywood. Uh -huh. which was not easy. It was no small affair. I had not a penny in my pocket. Mm -hmm. What I did have in L.A. was my famous aunt who was on the Golden Girls, okay. Okay. Rue McClanahan. Wow. So I'm staying with my Aunt Rue, who played Blanche on the Golden Girls. <laughs> That's cool. That's a whole other story, <laughs> which I take total credit for. <laughs> Shamelessly, I created that character for her one night. I take total credit. <laughs> Of course, she forgot all about it. Once she sobered up, she forgot everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to L.A. At that time, there was this newspaper called Drama Log. And this was before agents had gotten a hold of dancers. We were still pretty rogue, you know. Okay. We could do anything we wanted. So at this point in time, you already had all of your, like your, your schooling and stuff. I I was trained as a dancer. Okay. And I saw that they were there was this audition. They okay. said rock video wanted one girl. I took a taxi in the rain to this studio I've never been in my life. I got there late, pushed my way to the front my elephant balls which is probably why the elephants <laughs> love me so much they go oh my god i've never seen elephant balls like that on a woman before and i had no idea what band it was for okay they narrowed it down from a hundred to five i made the final cut oh wow then they said we're gonna call the person who gets it and you still don't know what band it is don't know what band it is I had been in living in Monroe, Louisiana, and had studied one summer at UNO, University of New Orleans, with the New Orleans Ballet. Taking the trolley in 100 degree weather oh, and pouring rain. So I get a call. I got the job. I oh. said, what band is it? They said, it's the Stray Cats. Oh, oh way. wow. They said, we're going to send you to New Orleans for a week. What? Wow. Now that, I got to chill. I, this, this is proof that your mind is more powerful than you think. Yeah. Yes, I agree. When we stay absolutely focused on what we want, and this is what I teach with animals, you visualize what you do want, mm -hmm. not what you don't want. And what almost everybody does, I mean, 99% of people will tell the animal what not to do. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't chew that. Don't yeah. be on that. Don't fight with that. And then they're not giving any information on what to do. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Usually like puppies and stuff, you just yell at them and yeah. don't do that. Yeah. No, no, no. And you expect them to know that they're supposed to be doing something different. And they don't know what it is because you didn't have the clarity to explain it to them. Yeah. With pictures and emotions. Same thing with children. That if you visualize what you do want, you say what you do want. You've got to educate with information. Mm -hmm. It's not just no, no, stop, stop. They know they're in trouble, but they don't know what they did wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of mental entrainment. Mm -hmm. That we have to go through life focused on what we do want to happen. Yeah. And yeah. not what we don't want to happen. Yeah. And right now, it's almost like the 
the negativity is almost like a drug. Oh yes, mm-hmm. big time. Fully like agree America's with that. America's totally hooked on this. Oh yeah. Negative, self righteous, furious. Like Unfortunately, it's, like it's really intoxicating mm-hmm. for them all to act like they're five years old trying to kill each other. <laughs> I mean, I spend so much time. I was, I was telling you before, I twenty seven countries in the last nineteen years. Most That's of awesome. those countries, I hit every year, wow. over and over. Oh wow, and over and over, and within each country. Hanover, Hamburg, Black Forest, Frankfurt, uh, all over, all over Germany, Munich, all over Switzerland, all over Africa. That's incredible. And I live out of a suitcase. Wow, that's awesome. That's that's a lot of dedication right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, COVID stopped that. Okay. Mm. I was gonna ask if you're still doing it or. Well, I will be. Once the COVID mm. stuff. I will over be. With. Nothing's gonna keep me out of Africa. And and people, a lot of my my students come from everywhere. You mm-hmm. know, they come from New Zealand, Australia, Japan, South Korea, oh, wow. Canada, all over the states, um, all over Europe, and they they want to go. and And I think this is this is what the whole point is. We don't know how long we're going to be on this earth. Yeah. Do what you came to do. You yeah. Know, do what you came to do. Say what you came to say. Write what you came to write. You know, have the conversations. Film the things that you intended to accomplish. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> that's kind of what we're trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what we're doing. Yeah, you, you know? are. You I, are. I never. Yeah. Yeah. We were just kind of. Yeah. I was kind of joking about that the, the the other day. I was like, you know, we're all just here. Let's just do what we can, and then we all die. And it was like a joke. Yeah. But I was like, you know, like you, you say that, and I'm like, well, that actually puts what I was joking about in a perspective yeah. perfectly. <laughs> but it's true, yeah, that we're here for a reason. When yeah. If you if you stay on point, you realize your life is a mission of some sort. Mm-hmm. Everyone's life is a, some sort of a mission that they're on, and mine has been about defending African animals, uh, tigers in Thailand, tigers all over the world. Wow. I'm very, very into tiger rescue, elephants all over the world, gorilla, uh, stopping can lion hunting. So what, was that always just like a passion of yours then? Was like the animals or was it something from a kid, like a childhood thing? Or was it just kind of something you fell into once you started realizing you had a gift? Something I fell into. Okay. When did you, when did you, like, when did you realize you like had this gift and when did you? Um, discover this it was a, around the time of oh. the demons one can you pull that mic up just a little bit closer sorry oh sure you, got you, can, you can move it go ahead and move it oh. yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah you're not gonna there you go okay i was getting How's some that? Is I, that my, better? my line was getting faint over here that's perfect thank you okay that's good you're good now uh, something about around, around the time night of the demons you're saying yeah and whenever fans come up to me at these cons and a lot of them have tattoos of me on their body. Uh-huh. And it's growing. And there's no reason why it should be. You know, I don't have a TV show out there yet. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's all I, all I can hint at is yet. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, okay. I am a writer. <laughs> and I'm working on something. So I, I've awesome. got something awesome. on my sleeve. That that's that's all I can say. You guys heard it on the twelfth part sec. <laughs> you did first time anybody's ever really heard it. Oh, oh wow. awesome! That's cool. There you go. We're the first people. That's really exciting. <laughs> I got something up my sleeve. But the dance sequence is what everybody talks about, and I was I was working magic. Mm-hmm. I was allowing myself to be filmed while I was working magic, and there's this phenomenon in Africa with the shaman called shape-shifting. Okay. Okay. And um, in voodoo. And the voodoo priest or princess, and then all sorts of crazy things can happen. I mean, they can float in the air. I mean, all sorts of crazy things can happen. The result of it is that the whole community experiences a healing. Okay. By means of the person who is most in touch with spirit. Okay. So the medicine man, the shaman, is the one who's going to bring the wisdom. Mm-hmm. And 
they're going to bring that by means of a uh, energetic exchange, okay. you know? Yeah. And I think that's what people are feeling that I, I, for a moment there, I turned into a black Jaguar slapping paws on the floor. And if, if you watch the dance, wow. you'll see it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I was playing with the fire. Yes. And I was literally playing with the fire and okay. I, I let that possession happen. And it's funny that the whole movie was about possession. Yeah. And I play the character that's warning everybody against it, saying, no, no, don't fool with this. Yeah, yeah. And then I get famous for the one who was the most possessed. Yeah. But possession can be a positive thing. Okay. You know, in the full-on Christian, born-again Christian, in the full-on, because I go to the churches in Africa with 600 screaming African people, you know, lying on their bellies, speaking in tongues, crying. I'm having healings. Yeah. They, it's, it's possessed with the Holy Spirit. But if it's possessed with some sort of higher positive energy, then it's going to come through you and get channeled so that there's a group healing. Okay. And when we're working with animals, it might be we're in touch with the spirit of tiger. Okay. You know, what, what does that mean? Or eagle. Yeah. Hmm. So is that kind of, so you just, do you guys figure out what it means? Or is it kind of what it means to the individual? It's what it means to the individual. Okay. But, but all of the animal kingdom, all of it, I, I believe that they are not below us. Okay. I believe that they are more of an angelic kingdom above us. Oh, wow. Because they're living in perfect harmony mm -hmm. with each other and with the planet. We're the only creature on the planet that is so completely out of harmony. Mm -hmm. We're the only creature that's walking around saying, why are we here? No, that's no. true. Yeah. Definitely true. Who yeah. are we? What is this all about? Yeah. And also, how did this get so fucked up? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did it get so fucked up? Mm -hmm. How did we end up where we are? That's what we were just talking about the other day. We were like. I told him, I was like, I mean, how can we, everybody walks around on a three by five device yeah. and nobody even knows how to converse. Nobody knows how to, you know, carry on a conversation with each other anymore. When you, uh, when you say that like animals are in harmony, it makes sense because they all, they know what they're doing. Their instincts, you know, natural instincts to them every day. They live, they know, they know how to live. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, like you were saying, we walk around wondering what, what we're doing here, they know what they're doing here. Animals know what they're doing here. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've flown in northern Norway mm -hmm. twice to interview a woman who's the top wolf specialist. Oh, wow. And we'll sit, and these wolves are wild, mm -hmm. and they start coming out of the woods and gather around us. I mean, they're in an enclosure, but it's a vast enclosure. You're never going to have a wolf say, well, why am I here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who am I? Yeah. What, what am I supposed to do? I mean, yeah, they know why they're there. Yeah. Every animal knows who he is. Mm -hmm. And the humans are the ones that are the most confused. Yeah. And the tragic thing about it, from my perspective, is that we're here to fix all the problems. We're the ones that are supposed to steward. Yeah. And we've completely lost our way. Yeah. Definitely. We're the shepherds and we've lost our way, but we have this last chance. I think this is the last ditch opportunity mm -hmm. to turn the things around. I agree with that. Yeah. And it won't be our generation, mine or yours. It'll be the kids. That's what, hopefully. Yes. Yeah. It, it is the kids. You think? Oh, no, they're coming. They're here. They're here, huh? Oh, they're here. I've I've got a a niece who's working on a science project. I think she was thirteen. Aunt Amelia, I've created a new kind of plastic that is biodegradable and also edible. So you can uh, drink your beverage and then eat the container. What? And then she <laughs> goes on. You know, well, glucose had this many electrons, and this had so, so many electrons, and this is why it didn't work with sucrose, and this is why it didn't work before. So. We're counting on those kids. We're counting on a, wow. 
I mean, a handful of Einsteins to turn all this around. And they already are. Yeah. They already are. There's a supposedly some kind of bacteria that can break down all the plastic in the ocean. Really? There's some new chemical reaction that can clean the ozone. Wow. I mean, you know, those that generation of little light workers, that's what we're counting on. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's to hold the space for them. And in my case, it's to be able to say, it's all right that you have whatever kind of abilities that you have. Yeah. And that you're different from everybody else. Thank God that you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank God that you are. Or we would never be able to get any change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's kind of like what we were talking about just the other day again. It was like, it was like, you know, I said, we're all... um People talk about how the, the ancients, the Egyptians and stuff like this built the pyramids and they're like, oh, they had to have alien tech. I was like, well, you know, even if even if it were that, because we are believers in aliens and space and stuff like that. But I said it, that, you know, if they did communicate, like I said, it would all been telepathically, you know, they were more pure mm -hmm. human beings and souls. And I, like, you know, if they were to seek help from a higher being mm -hmm. of whatever you believe that being is, it it's definitely not going to be us right now. Because I, I think we're just, I don't feel that we're very pure people, pure, yeah. pure souls anymore. Does that make sense? I don't know. I feel like it's really clouded for us. Which, well, like what you were saying is like the Egyptians are like, they didn't walk around like you said, asking what the hell are we doing here? They, like you said, they had the purpose. They knew what they were doing here. They were pure, like, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, you yeah, know? pretty much. Pure is a good word and clouded is a good word. Because, you know, the, that beam of light, that's mm -hmm. lightning, that burns away all the clouds that is what i'm talking about okay that if i if i whether it's a show horse or somebody's poodle if i'm brought in to solve a problem and i need to know is this problem physical or is it emotional okay and these two things can have very similar symptoms mm-hmm I mean, one horse, a horse that was a show horse, expensive show horse. The woman called me in Southern California. I'll give you a for instance. And she said, I've seen five vets. And if you don't cure my horse in the next 24 hours, I'm going to put her down. Mm -hmm. I go, well, that's great. That's some pressure. Yeah. Some yeah weight no on no your pressure shoulders. at all. Just, you know, you exactly. got 24 hours, 23 that's, now. That's 23. <laughs> and counting. Tick, yeah. tick, tick. <laughs> and I went down there. And she had, you know, the horse was kicking, the horse was mm -hmm. biting, the horse was freaking out in oh, her no. stall. They'd x-rayed her back. They'd done all these sadistic tests on, which they do. They put tubes down their noses and fill Oof. their lungs with oh, yeah. water and put them on treadmills. It's sadistic, totally sadistic, the way we treat horses. And I work with horses all over the world. And Olympic show horses and... We won the Longines Global Championship Tour in Rome and Vienna. I got the gold for the richest men in the world. Really? Wow. And that's how open-minded some people can be, even though we don't think of them in those terms. Yeah. But he won because he wanted to win. He won because we were we we made a pact that we were going to uplift the entire audience and make them laugh and scream and giggle like kids. And that's exactly what he did. That's a different story. But this story, <laughs> <laughs> I go down to see this horse that's kicking and freaking out and biting and won't let it won't let the woman touch her. And I get down there and I said, What's going on? Now the horse came up to me, put her arm, put her head in my arms, and cried real tears. Oh and, wow. And now the way I work. We just, we take away the need to speak English. Yeah. Because I may have a student who's Korean. Now, her intuition, which is the voice in your head that speaks to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her intuition is going to talk to her in Korean. Yeah. About the horse. My German students are going to hear it in German. It's not because the horse speaks Korean or German. It's because the people do. Yeah, yeah. So I hear information in English because I speak English. And I it's seeing pictures and feeling emotion 
and allowing yourself to enter another living being's energy field as if you were in a three-dimensional video game. Mm -hmm. You are that horse and you start running programs. You start running, but that's how we ask questions. What do you love? What makes you happy? We generate that feeling of emotion, looking out the horse's eyes. When she sees her favorite other horse, what does it look like? When she eats her favorite food, when she goes on her favorite walk, when she does her favorite thing, when she's at her absolute happiest, fear is a different vibration. And when we're engaged in fear, what what's happening around you to make you afraid? Mm -hmm. It's so simple. It sounds so obscure, but it's so simple. But if, if somebody walked in the store right now and was upset and you said, what's wrong? And they say, nothing's wrong. Well, you know that they're lying. Yeah. Most you, men know that. <laughs> you felt it already. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you felt it already. Yeah. 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 And humans don't tell the truth yeah yeah and we're so you're supposed to read the woman's mind yeah and boy is she gonna get pissed off if you don't oh yeah <laughs> but she, she's not gonna come out and tell you yeah what it is that she wants you to do you need to figure it out because it's embarrassing <laughs> for her to be that yeah. honest yeah yeah horses are honest okay gorillas are honest no matter what tigers are honest so that's kind if of the tiger is pissed off. She's going to let you know. I mean, so you know where you you're you're dealing with something that's pure. And okay, that's what I say. That's yeah. the pure and clouded comes up clean and authentic and closer to God mm -hmm. because we can it's it's this this raw beauty that you're dealing with yeah. this vulnerability. So I start. Asking questions, what happened? She said, well, the horse next to me got shipped out. I said, well, that was the one that you loved the most. So that was the her partner, her oh. husband. And this horse had stood next to her. And I said, well, how many years? And she gave me the number, like six years. When did they move him out? Two weeks ago. What did he look like? Black and white with a white star on his forehead. What was his name? Starhawk. Oh. And I wow. turned to the woman and say, the horse standing next to her, the black with a white star, Starhawk, got moved out two weeks ago. They've been together for six years. That was her husband. Did it ever even occur to you that her heart oh my God. is broken? Her heart is totally broken. Whoa. And this is the lady that was going to euthanize her horse if you didn't fix it in 24 hours? Yeah. Pe wow. People, people. You have to be in touch with your emotion to use your own body as an instrument. Yeah. Like, let me know what you're feeling. I am willing to go wherever you want to take me. If they're angry, I'm angry. If they're sad, I'm sad. If they're lonely, I'm lonely. If they're frustrated, I'm frustrated. So part of it is giving up control. Being, and, but the same thing with your wife. If being she, vulnerable too. Yeah. If, if you're, one of your wives is upset, you have to surrender to the fact that you're going to feel what she feels. Yeah. And if you feel what they feel, oftentimes that's all you had to do. My wife's going to be yelling at me during this episode. <laughs> She'll be like, see, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you don't even have to fix it. Yeah. You just have to be understand if yeah. you're if you don't you're not really together yeah you're you have to be able to share the same vibratory rate yes. yeah put everything aside you put egos aside put you know your yeah anger all that has to be put aside and Under, just, just understand, understand where they're understand coming it. from and how they feel and open up be more pure towards each other yeah it's kind of what you're saying yes yeah <laughs> and that that's in goose language there <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good goose language. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when I'm, I'm just because I'm just really curious and it's so interesting to me. Yeah, this is. So when you, I'm amazed. Yeah, <laughs> when you talk to when you speak to animals, they they actually talk to you. 
or how do they how do they communicate my with you? mind translates information into words okay okay, okay. that's called clear audience clear hearing in latin now everyone is clairsentient okay okay you have the capacity to look at an animal say we're working with a orangutan in the zoo mm -hmm. you have the capacity to look at an animal and say he's sad okay He's frustrated. Mm -hmm. He's bored. Or she's really happy. Um, all animal lovers have access to that. Okay. And everything I'm saying applies to people. And everything I'm saying applies to dead people and dead animals. Because we're also able to communicate with spirit. Yeah. So I was going to say, is it kind of like, I think what you're saying is like, is it kind of like how uh, psychic mediums with, you know, past like you know dead people stuff like that where they come through and communicate with them is it is that how you kind of pick up on them do they send you just signs images flashes glimpses what is it the like? more you're able to silence your mind and emotion uh -huh. the more you're going to pick up okay and most people are busy 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 yes mm -hmm. and uh, most of whatever they're doing is either habitual bad habits or simply unconscious behavior yeah that the the monkey chatter the mouse and the wheel and the brain is going all the time yeah so i teach people how to turn that off okay and when you're silent and you're listening mm -hmm. and say i'm teaching a seminar and i bring a owl or a tortoise or a parrot out onto this or anything right a dog anything yeah when you're quiet and you're focused and you're envisioning that you are them experiencing what they think and feel what does the world look like through their perspective what do things taste like what do things smell like what does it feel like mm-hmm you'll find that you can pick up a million times more bits of information than you thought you could. Wow. Everybody can. They're just taught not to look. Mm -hmm. So with that, that would explain why they say kids and, you know, under a certain age are more like uh, susceptible to seeing like, you know, monsters. So it's, it's spirits and stuff like that. But they say that, you know, oh, there's a girl standing in my doorway and it could be an actual spirit, but they say it just because they're more open to that. They haven't learned how to shut that part After of After a certain off age, yet. they kind of block it out. Exactly. I mean, in you're not, you're not shutting that down to be like, oh no, that's just my imagination working. I need to focus on this. Yeah. Somebody I don't have time has to shut you down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I feel like that's the parents a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Saying, oh, no, it's not that. You know what I mean? They don't allow them to to see it or continue to feel that, you know? Or older siblings shame mm -hmm. it out of you. Mm -hmm. that it's, it's You're not supposed to be able to see the spirit of your grandmother. You're not yeah. supposed to be able to talk to the cat. Yeah. Or see the spirit of the flower or the trees. Now, I'm Cherokee and Choctaw. Okay. okay. So in Just native... like Tim McGraw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's normal for us. If you couldn't talk to your horse, there's something seriously wrong with you. You need to know if the water is safe to drink. You need to know if the storm is coming. Well, And when you're in touch with and you're listening to the universe around you, it just becomes part of your automated nervous system. It's common sense. Mm-hmm. Now, the pineal gland is the part of the brain that we're associating. That's the third eye with um, psychic ability mm -hmm. okay. and perception. Okay. Scientists tell us that atrophy is about the age of seven. And it's the same time where we learn written language and mathematics. So we're learning to read and write. Mm -hmm. We're using the other hemisphere of the brain. In anthropology, it's when a particular tribe now has a written language, then they're not communicating through dream time. 
the way the Aborigines did. Yeah. And all of the Native American and all of the indigenous tribes around the world were more telepathic before they were writing the words. Yeah. It changes the, the brain chemistry. And for children, it's before they can talk. I mean, if you got a two or one year old, you know that baby feels, mm. that baby thinks, that baby just can't use words yet to mm -hmm. formulate the ideas. And it's that much more frustrating. Imagine what your dog feels like. Yeah. Well, wow. That's, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I've been seeing like stuff online, uh, more recently, like my wife watching videos and stuff like that. Uh, dogs, there people are making like these like things on the ground for them, and they're like buttons on them, and like they're teaching their dogs to like walk up and hit walk when they want to go for a walk or food, water. Like they're these dogs are actually communicating with obviously a little more dumbed down than what you do, but they're communicating with their owner with these buttons. And I think that's insane. Like, it's so cool to me that these dogs are doing that. Like they're able to communicate like heard that. I about that. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. I, I worked on the sly with Coco the gorilla who could speak deaf American sign language. Oh, wow. So we got to experiment if she could actually use signs mm -hmm to let Dr. Patterson, her keeper, know that I had been talking to her. And she could. Really? Wow. And she could. Yeah. And one time I'm the funniest, the funniest of it, especially for the for the Night of the Demons lovers, because they know about my <laughs> dancing. One day I was I took a jazz class. So I was in dance class mm -hmm. in LA. And Penny emailed me that night and she said what were you doing at and it was exactly the same time i said i was i was taking a jazz dance class and she said coco went into this crazy dance really she started dancing uncontrollably what? so she was reacting to me so we were in communion now we already are yeah with the world around us mm -hmm. We're trying to pretend that we're not. Yeah. And that's yeah. what's messing us up. I agree with wow, that. Wow, yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> that's it. That we were just, same thing. We're, it's so crazy that they're talking about all this. We were just kind of talking about how I told him that eventually it's going to have to be, I was telling him for like, telepathic and stuff like that. I said, because we're all going to have to end up at one level at some point in time right. in a universal language that is the only universal language to me. It already exists. It, and it's existed for, you know, forever. We just forgot how to use it, I think. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Yeah. Because, I mean, our mom our mom and our grandpa are both energy healers. Oh, fantastic. So they, yeah. they're yeah, both. I that's knew, why we're I very open to this. I see it in your eyes, both of you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I knew I was preaching to the choir with you. That's why we were both very, we're very, <laughs> very intrigued, intrigued by all this. Yes, yes because they, we, they do. We, we've grown up with this. We've been to. Our whole life. You know, uh, ceremonies where that's where the animals and stuff you know I, I, same time i was young i still crack jokes towards my grandpa we did a big indian <laughs> ceremony drum circle all that stuff and yeah. then like by the end of it there was legitimately the eagles were surround like circling us you know we had yeah. horses that came to the fence there was dogs that were trying to get to us it was it was amazing it i was you know i was like 14 at the time i think yeah. and i was cracking jokes about it and all the way down it. but then it, it, I think it was all the way down to the squirrels in the trees. Like, yeah, <laughs> they all came to see what was going on. And it was because I think that when we actually did it, no matter whether you wanted to or not, you, you did open up, you forgot about everything. That's you right. Know, everybody yeah. was there for one reason. And then you kind of just forgot about the outside world. You shut down all the things that you were embarrassed about or. And everybody, everybody gets in tune with each other. And like you said, you know, with, with nature and yeah. the world and really, really cool. It's, it's, Really, it's life changing. It really is. <laughs> In, we have to think about what is the human animal? What were we supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is this about? And when I'm in Africa, I go into the schools. So my charity is called Archangel, Amelia's oh, wow. Archangel wow. Society. That's awesome. Thank you. And we dance as elephants and we draw elephants and we make up plays about 
protecting and poaching. They draw the poacher. They act it out, murdering the elephants. And we we talk about getting jobs on the safari parks, protecting the animals, mm -hmm. which is their long-term financial security. And get, keeping the girls in school, getting the girls into school, getting the girls into the workforce. So 50% of the workforce isn't just idle. And having everyone understand that the African animals are a treasure. Mm -hmm. Now, whether COVID is man-made or whether COVID actually came from the wet markets in China. Yeah. I was in Zimbabwe three years ago, and they're the most illegally trafficked animal in the world on the black market is the pangolin, which is okay. a little anteater. That's what they say COVID was exactly was, came from, right? Yeah. Exactly. And I um I was in the schools in Zam, which is impossible to get to. You know, we took this, we took an open air trolley for six hours after we took a bus <laughs> after we took got had to go through like four different cabbies oh, to wow. get through wow. <laughs> over the border, no man's land. There was a political coup the day we landed. Oh no. It was crazy. Wow. And I had with me two American women. Uh-huh. One of them is one of my mother's friends. She's a scientist, and she oversees nuclear warheads. Oh, wow. The other one was a very wealthy Jewish divorcee from Florida who'd never been out of the country. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they both kicked ass all over. Really? Oh, not just one of the other. They both did. They okay. both did. I, I, I love the way they both reacted. And we got up to Zimbabwe where we couldn't get a book across the border. Every single thing. I couldn't get a crayon across the wow. border. They, they confiscate everything. Wow. Really? The poverty there is so, so outrageous. And you've never seen such happy people. Really? I've never seen happier children in my life than I see in Zambia every year. I lead safaris. Usually every November we spend Thanksgiving with the elephants. Yeah. I lead the safari at the only place where the elephants come into the hotel. They walk through the lobby. The elephants? Yes. They're in the <laughs> lobby. What? And I have a, a family of five elephants. My last book was called Whispers from the Wild. Uh -huh. and I have a chapter about this. My elephant family that is bonded to me is part of that family that would walk through the, her name was Queen Wonky Tess, the famous one. Her daughter bonded to me, and the the mom was poached. Mysterious, they found mysteriously mm -hmm. dead, oh, even no. though she was this huge celebrity elephant. So, the five elephants will wait around my tent before my plane lands, before I know where I'm going. Really? Wow. Before I know where I'm going. So they just sense it. They know, and then I'll check into the safari camp. They'll give me the key. I'll walk the full distance of the safari park, and whatever tent they've put me in, five elephants are waiting around the tent. Wow. That's insane. Um, Is that one of like the more powerful animals that you've then come in contact with? They all are. They all are. They all are. I mean, I, I'm on a level where... The consciousness within every living being is universal. Okay. So we're talking about pure creativity, pure beauty, pure grace, pure power. Pure, it's, it's all that God is manifested in all these different forms. Yeah. But it's the same stuff. It's we're made of ancient stardust. Literally, our bodies are made of ancient stardust from different star systems. Yeah. That's a scientific fact. Yep. So I'm not looking at the outside edges of things. I'm looking at the internal, the internal content, the content and meaning, the emotion, the spirit, the soul. And my mom is a very, very accomplished scientist, radiation biology and molecular chemistry. Wow. And she said, how, Mimi, how are you going to get anybody to care about pangolin? <laughs> <laughs> 
Nobody even knows what a pangolin is, right? I didn't know what it was, but apparently he's researched yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're covered in scales. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you pull it up? I want to see yeah. these. They're so defenseless, they don't even have teeth. They have cartilage in their bellies, and they'll eat the ants, and the cartilage in their tummies chews up. Do these come from like a... Where they where they they come from all over the world? They're native to Zimbabwe. Okay. They're native to this particular part of Africa. And do they live in like caves and stuff then if they're so fragile or No. No. But when they're scared, they roll up into a ball and the poacher picks them up and walks off. With like them. a uh, armadillo, right? Exactly. Similar? Exactly, except bigger. Without, do they have they have like shells or no shells? They're like scales. They're scales. There you go. There you go. Oh, wow. Well, I was working with a charity where I volunteer. Those are incredible. Yeah, there's one rolled up right there. And the founder of the charity said to me, That's really cool. I have a secret. If you tell anybody, they'll kill me and they'll kill you. Oh, wow. They'll come to the house and kill us where, both. Where was this at? This was in, this was in Zambia. Okay, Zambia. She had a pangolin under her bed. Oh. And I got down on my belly, connecting to this pangolin. Okay, so get this number one most illegally trafficked animal in the world. Some Chinese like to make soup out of them. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. That's where they delicacy. had them in the, in the wet market. Uh -huh, that's, how, that's how they end up in the wet market. Yeah. In the beginning, when they first started press about COVID, it was on... Um, the Australian news, like the, their version of 2020, that the virus was identical in, or like 98% identical in pangolin. Okay. Then somebody came out with the scam that it came from bats. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody's going to admit to having a black market illegally trafficked pangolin that they paid a half a million dollars for. Wow, they're to worth that much. Smuggle it into China. Mm, wow, and whether that's true or not, um, the the pangolin got even. So then the COVID, huh. they, so they're saying this is something that lays dormant within the pangolins, and that's what they're saying, or I something mean, that kind of cross. That crosses species lines because they're eating. And some scientists, it was very interesting, saying that it was inevitable. Yeah. In the food chain, when you're there are all these exotic animals from all over the world together in the wet market that should not yeah. have been in proximity to yes. each other. And that people are eating animals that you know we should not be eating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because down there it's kind of like a lug like a of the, the riches and the royalty down there. But they, the beautiful thing that happened is that uh, they didn't release it globally, but word is a lot of the wet markets in China have closed. And the first ones that closed were in Vietnam. Okay. So it worked. Good. So then- Yeah, that is good, for sure. That, that So that could go deeper on that as to, to get some of these things shut down maybe? <laughs> Somebody's sorry, got, I, I, it's conspiracy somebody's started rolling there. I'm sorry. Got to start <laughs> the ball rolling. Yeah. Somebody's got to start the ball rolling. Okay. Um, my pangolin campaign might have been a drop in the bucket, from what the world can see. Okay. But in the energetic world, it was big. Okay. I flew down there on my own dime. Raised all sorts of hell. And said, God, I don't care how this turns out. I don't care what this looks like. Get it done. Get it done. Wow. And when, when things change, that's how they change. That you love something so much that you'll you'll die for them. You'll do anything for them. That's yeah. how I am with my tigers and my elephants. And other people feel that passion. That's like uh, Paul Watson from uh, Whale Wars. The, uh, yes, the... I've seen. Uh, yeah, I know him. I also work with humpbacks and okay. actually wow. all whales. I, I lead whale safaris oh, in that's Hawaii. Awesome. I was in Hawaii do, leading a whale safari when COVID hit. Oh, oh wow. wow. 
But it is that because most people feel helpless. They want to do something and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there has to be some people who are going to step up and say, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Y'all help me. Yeah. Just help me. Yeah. You know, fund the charity. Help me get it done. I will get it done. Trust me. Yeah. I mean, I've got two books now that are bestsellers in South Korea. I've never even been to South Korea. Hmm. Animal communication is is now, not only is it looked upon as a true and noble profession in South Korea, I had a student fly to Hawaii from Japan, and the Japanese government funded her. Wow. Really? Because they take it that seriously. Wow which is incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. But people come to me about stopping the dog meat trade. Yeah. I'll get it done. I will get it done. That's incredible. So you're saying a lot of this stuff is might have been you practice dancing in the mirror a little too much and Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's breathing life into the dream. It's it's dreaming the dream until the dream becomes a reality. Mhm. Uh -huh. And you have to have that kind of clarity. You can't let all the self-criticism and the self-doubt and the negativity around you, can't let people beat you down. The cloudiness. Yeah. No, no, that's not my limitations. That's their limitations. Yeah. It's not your limitation. That's their problem. Mm -hmm. They don't think you can do something. That's their problem. That doesn't mean you can't do it. Yeah. We can all do everything we want to do. That's the reason we want to do it. We want to do it because we should do it. Yeah. We're supposed to do it. Yeah. It's, yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm talking about, you know, all the changes that can be made to make the world a better place. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, I'm just processing right <laughs> processing. now. Processing. That's a that's, lot. That's amazing though. What you're what you're doing is is amazing. Well, thank you too for for even wanting to have this conversation because most of the horror <laughs> interviews what the makeup feel like? <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take to get it on? I'm like, well, I've only heard that question about mm, 700 times. <laughs> like, I don't know. What do you feel like sitting in a chair for five hours? Get, no. Getting tortured. Having... No, this was actually. I feel, like, I feel like probably not a lot of people want to talk about this kind of thing. Well, I mean, I'm sure a lot do. But like, like you said, if they're bringing you on, they're probably wanting to just talk about Angela. It, it, it's apples and oranges. Okay. I mean, I, I have done over 500 radio interviews talking about consciousness and animals oh, wow. and God and energy and telepathy and channeling dead people and what the animals expect of, from the humans for the future of the planet. No, this is my norm. Okay. And I don't think the horror movie fans need to be dumbed down. To. Yeah, I don't need to dumb this down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that was the next question I was going to ask you. Is uh, so so you you communicate with animals and stuff like that. Does the do you, can you do the same thing with with people with humans? Um, unfortunately, yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, they I didn't more know if that. Yeah, if and that. and one one kind of clairvoyant communication is very similar to the next. Let's say I ask. The cat, what's going on? Yeah. Now, the people are probably going to say, my cat is won't eat. Take him to the vet. They stick a thermometer up his bum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Torture him, basically. And it, granted, I have a lot of friends and, and students and colleagues that, and, that are vets that I love. Yeah. And they're the first to admit that this is what they have to do. And end up running tests and exploratory surgery and all sorts of nonsense on them. Mm -hmm. I can say to the cat, what's wrong? Now, if he says to me, my wife died last May. And I'm, what, what color was she? Well, she was orange and white. Yeah, alive. kind of like the horse. And she used to sit on the, on the couch and she's missing and she's gone. Okay, so that's going to open an avenue to me. So now I'm going to talk to the cat. Mm-hmm. And, and the cat may show me your mother or your grandmother that crossed over. And they came to get the cat. So now we're going to veer off into 
grandma who grew up in Scotland and was married to the guy who was in World War II. And then all of a sudden he shows up. Wow. And so he had a dog and there's the dog with him. And so it's a, it's an endless tapestry that once, once a door opens, as long as you can stay concentrated, Mm -hmm. you can, you can really focus. Mm -hmm. It's not dead people, spirits or animals. It's both. It's Uh both. And then the same thing is with human beings and living people that you can learn how to feel what somebody else is feeling. You can feel their physical problems. Go, wow, you know, he's got a backache or his knees bothering him. Yeah, yeah. That's where our mom is, yeah. Yeah. We'll be sitting on the couch. She'll be like, she'll be sitting there and just like, what's wrong with you? What? My elbow is hurting. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like. And especially being our mom, she knows. Oh, yeah. She's connected with her with her two sons so she's like i know something's wrong with you guys i can feel it or my back hurts or something yeah. and like how do you know <laughs> so i think that's kind of like what the same thing with like the you, you once you open that ear and it's once once you're in sync it's kind of like the gorilla thing you were talking about you you stay in sync to a certain or is it kind of forever maybe forever okay because that was later on you were saying correct that after you were doing that you were doing your dance or whatever and then the, they said the gorilla started acting she was tuned into me that's a, yeah so she I wasn't trying so yeah. how, how long was the she, period of when you seen this gorilla and then you came i never saw her oh wow oh you never saw her i only had pictures of her wow oh my goodness okay that that <laughs> that's that's incredible wow so you got that in sync with uh i work with photographs from all over the world because oh, people wow. okay. email okay. their pictures so sometimes you don't you don't so you don't even always see them then, like no, in person. No, I I'd say the I, norm now is that I don't see them in person. Mm-hmm. I mean, right now there's a new client who's a British rock star. Okay. And she's having problems with her dog, so she's going to email me pictures of the dogs, oh. and I tune in through the eyes. That's so cool. Sorry, I'm just. That's so incredible. The energy field is. It it exists mm-hmm. independently of the body. All right. So let's say I'm talking to you and you're three feet from me. Mm-hmm. Well, let's say that you're in Los Angeles or you're 3,000 miles from me. Mm-hmm. What difference does that make? Yeah, it, yeah. The distance doesn't make any difference. So then let's say we're going to talk to your grandfather who's in heaven. Mm-hmm. The distance doesn't make any difference. And the physical body is, it's not even the focal point for the communication. You're talking from your soul to my soul. Okay. You happen to have a body right now, but if you didn't, you could still communicate from one soul to another soul. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what that soul looks like. It doesn't matter what language they speak. It doesn't matter what species they are. The soul is a resonant. I mean, I mean, it's, there were there were Star Trek analogies that were brilliant, and it's a disturbance in the force. Yeah, and it's use the force, Luke. That's what I was mm-hmm. doing. That's dancing Star in the Wars, mirror. Yeah. Yep, that's using the force. Mm-hmm. He's been trying to figure out tap into the force for quite some time now, so. <laughs> You might be able to help him with that. <laughs> His force. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you said you, so like, the, like you're saying, like you can feel that like through the soul. So does that communicate? Like you said, through the eyes, you said you see it through the eyes. I work better with the eyes. Yeah. So that puts a whole new twist on a picture is worth a thousand words. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the eyes are the window of the soul. So okay. Okay. Um, it is, but you don't even have to have that. Mm-hmm. So then I've had people call me before and say, I'm having problems with my cat. And I'd say, is he black and white and standing next to your left ankle? She said, yeah. I said, well, okay, I got it. I'm, so when people, I'm assuming that a lot of it has to do to with the person, by the time they get to you, they're probably succept, like open enough, to then want it badly enough that it's easier for you maybe? Yeah. Okay. Because like, I'm sure there's some people that block it. 
Um, I get a lot of grief from my mom says I block her energies and stuff like that. And then when I'm really in pain, it just, it happens like this. Yeah. Cause I, I'm like, I'm almost begging without begging. Yeah. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. I, I feel like maybe what, you could probably tell a difference if the person's really open to it or if the animal's really wanting to, if they're really needing that. Well, if I can't show you something you can't see mm -hmm. for yourself, I don't deserve to get paid. Okay. And chances are, I'm going to show you something that you're doing that you weren't aware of that you don't want to believe you're doing. Okay. Because nine out of 10 times, there's nothing wrong with the animal. The people are doing something mm -hmm. that they shouldn't be doing. It's always the people. It's never the animal. Yeah. Animals are just minding their own business, trying to have a wonderful life. Yeah. We're interfering with that. Yeah. Wow. I feel like I really understood that. I, I used to have a lot of reptiles. Oh, I love reptiles. And I love them. There was times where it would be, um, I would know by the way that like, as soon as I, I could almost like feel her energy. One of my, it was my boa constrictor is the one I had this oh, weird love, communication with. I love them. And I knew walking up to the tank, if I would open the cage, as soon as I put my hand in, I could just tell by the way that she looked at me, I guess you could say, which is, I guess people usually say you can't look at a snake, but I would know not to touch her. And yeah. if there was a couple of times where I was like in a hurry or something and I had to feed her real quick. So I just reach in and grab her and I got bit three times by her. And every time it wasn't her fault, I would take blame. I was like, you know, I, she told me that she, I knew I shouldn't have done that. She was giving me all the, You're all the energy. Not to. Yes. And I knew, I knew many times where I was like, I, I don't, I shouldn't mess with her right now. She doesn't want to be touched, no. but it was, it was weird. It's kind of like what you're saying is I was, I was feeling it like almost like feeling like leave me alone, but I guess I just didn't really know how to take that. And you're kind of just putting all that into perspective for me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and every time I did, I got bit, I got bit by her three times and all three times I said, it's not her fault. You deserved it. Yeah. She, she didn't want to be touched and I, you know, I didn't listen. So I guess, I, I guess I kind of understand it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that was one of the only animals. And then a, another dog I had that passed, a Great Dane. And oh, I love Great Danes. I have a Great Dane. I do too. And we just too. got a new pup. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. He's, uh, he's three months. We just got him. All he's... right. I think I'm going to leave it up to you two <laughs> to put together my next seminar. We oh. should do something here in Vegas. Oh, and that have would be your awesome. Great Dane puppy. I, I'm a big Great Dane lover. We have. I had a, two Deaf Danes, and uh, one of them had every illness you could imagine, and he passed away. Um, and when he did, his brother was Astro. He bonded with me like you couldn't believe. Oh. And I, that dog knew. I taught him sign language. Um, yeah. Everything he did, I, I was all by sign to teach him to go outside, to sit, to he would walk by me. He wouldn't walk in front of me. Everything. It was crazy. And that dog, that's the one dog I still miss. Mm -hmm. Every he's day. He's boy. Yeah, he was my boy. But. Do you think maybe the living dog was channeling the one in heaven? Did you ever feel like that other spirit was present? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, he was. He was. He was. Uh, that was because it was Scooby and Astro when his when his, when his brother passed. Yeah, he. I think it was kind of like he was really protective over his brother, and then like it was almost like I had to fill that void that he was missing. And I, I guess I understood that is what you were just kind of talking about. And that was when all of a sudden, because he would not listen, this dog was a pain in the butt. And once that happened and we got that bond, and he did anything I needed him to do. Mm -hmm. He was an amazing yeah, dog. An amazing <laughs> dog. <laughs> you know, but yeah. But that bond has to exist. I mean, it's also, it's a whole different perspective that I'm taking. So if people, I'll love the dog if they do what I want them to do. That's oh. what most people are thinking. Make yeah. the animal do what I want them to do. Why won't he listen? The question is not why won't he listen to you. The question is why won't you listen to him? And when you do listen and you are present with all your love mm -hmm. and you care and you acknowledge that this is an honor yeah. to have this cat in your house or to have this horse in your life or to have this dog in your life. You don't ever rescue them. They rescue you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Then 
it's a whole different paradigm. I'm coming at them knowing that they are my teacher. Okay. And that I'm just the translator between what the animal wants and needs and what the human is capable of hearing. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to get as much of that across as I can without making the person too defensive. Yeah. And you're right. The more the person is just head over heels in love with their animal, the more they're going to be able to get it. Well, your wife just got a horse Mm -hmm. that was that was abused previously. Yeah. And when you guys got there, right, she the horse walked right up to her and the lady put her head on her. Right. Said she's not hand friendly. She's not this. She's not that. My wife loves animals. She loves horses. And uh, she walked up to it and the horse, the lady's like, she won't even come. She's like, goes up. She's like, Casper, she's not even coming to the gate. She's like, oh, you ornery, blah, blah, blah. So my wife walks up and the horse runs to the gate and just puts her head into my wife's shoulder. Please, or his head. Please take me out yeah. of here. Right. Get me, <laughs> yeah. get me yeah. away from this woman. Get me out of here. This was just yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and even in that second, what we know is that the previous owner, and I'm, she won't hear this, but she probably is not listening to your podcast. Oh, no. God, no. <laughs> um, she has an awful voice. We know that. And she insults the horses. Okay. And she sends negative messages and tells them how terrible they are. Well, the horse and, bucked her. And the horse. And the I think she had a little saying, resentment towards her. Get me out of here. Mm-hmm. Get well. me away from her. <laughs> Because she was, a, uh, I think she, uh, she, it was more of like a, she was holding on to it because of what it was. I think like as like, as like a, you know. Status. Yes. More than because she was attached to it. I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like kind of like she got to go hang out with the barn with them. But the horse bucked her and she actually ended up breaking her back. So Oof. I know that she had probably, she was scared of, of it. Resentment. She was, re- there resentment, was resentment yeah. against the horse. Yeah. She kept saying, she, I wouldn't recommend riding this thing. She was real happy to get rid of that horse. Yeah. And that horse was real happy to get away from her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but no, yeah, I definitely agree. I, I agree with all that. Like that was like my great day. And it was as soon as, as soon as that happened and he wouldn't eat, stopped eating for about four days. And I was looking at him and I was just like, he never ate without his brother. So I went over and I sat down on the floor with him. And I just sat there and then he just started eating mm-hmm. and I was petting him, you know, and just like letting him know, like, I'm here. You're good. You know, don't worry. You're okay. I'll always be here. I'm not going anywhere. I know you miss your brother. And then that was after that. It was for God, four months. I sat on the floor four mm-hmm. times a day with him to feed him. And I wouldn't, every time he would not eat. And then finally he just was okay. Felt so, comfortable enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're doing <laughs> a lot of things unconsciously and you're doing them right one of them is that eating is a social behavior with dogs okay and say with cats Mm -hmm. in in the wild cats make a kill the lions eat together humans will put down a bowl of gross wet mush (laughs) and walk off yeah and the cat's supposed to stand there and and eat it and then the woman will say, oh, he's picky, bye, he won't eat his food, blah, blah, blah. No. I mean, I, I'm staying at the home of a student right now, and the cat would need to be offered many things and would walk away from it. And I, I pet him while he eats. And I said, he likes to be pet while he eats. Mm-hmm. He'll eat anything as long as you're petting him. Yeah. Because it's, it's social behavior. I had an old Maine Coon, two of my books I talk about, Mr. Jones. When every vet in L.A. said that he wasn't going to make it through the week, I put him on raw steak, little tidbits of raw steak and raw deep water fish. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones was my Maine Coon, my cat. Oh, okay, okay. okay. My cat. Okay. But I realized that he wouldn't eat until he saw me put a fork in the food and put the food in my mouth, I would put him on the same level as me. Okay. The minute he saw me eat, he would eat. Hmm. He lived another three and a half years. Really? Now you got wow. on the same level as the dog. You gave the information. I understand that you're grieving. Yeah. Because you like to eat with your brother. Mm-hmm. Because he's gone. I'm going to take his place. 
Yeah. And as long as you're eating, I'm going to be right here with you while you wow. eat. Now, he doesn't have to eat alone. Yeah. That was a, yeah. <laughs> with COVID, I've, I'm eating enough tacos in my car. <laughs> in, in the parking lot. To, to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you probably do it too. I mean, you end up going through a drive through and then you pull over and you eat alone in yeah. the parking lot. Alone in the restaurant. Yeah. 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 <sighs> It's not Man, my first is, choice. That got a, <laughs> that got heavy. <laughs> Everybody out there right now is like, yeah, trust me, we're all on the same page right now. <laughs> this is this is awesome. My this mind is, is blowing at this moment. This and is like, amazing. Seriously, this is my dog died five years ago, and a lot of things, you know, he died at nine, and a lot of things you've been talking about just went into perspective for me. So that's why I was kind of bringing him up. You know, what's actually funny. Is how you were saying you go on podcasts and stuff like that, and you talk about oh the makeup, how how long did you put the makeup on? I was kind of expecting the same thing. You coming on here and us talking about Angela and all that, but here we are talking about this, and this is this is incredible. <laughs> yeah, this is this, this is, is awesome. What we like, and I, I, yeah, I, just the, the the stuff you've done already is incredible. It blows <laughs> me away. Amazing. I can't believe you've you've. you've traveled to these parts of the world where people have probably like you know most people have never really been except yeah. for you know who lives there yeah yeah as an outside person this is got to be so first difficult year in 19 years i'm not in africa right now wow wow and and the reason that these podcasts are so cool that what you're doing is so cool mm -hmm. is to cre create a sense of community so that people don't feel so isolated they don't feel like freaks they don't mm -hmm. feel like well they're the only one who knows when their dead husband or their dead grandmother is in the room or they're having ufo experiences or yeah. psychic experiences and, and what i've discovered is that this is the norm mm -hmm. i i mean I, I probably hit the million point now with hundreds of thousands of students all over the world where everyone is experiencing this everyone wants to talk about this yeah they just don't know who to talk to yeah. they don't know where to go yeah and i'm completely fearless and outspoken with all this yeah that's, that's it a, doesn't scare me in the slightest because i'm right most people out there too are usually when it gets to that point or they're like you're saying they're feeling this they're they're almost embarrassed to admit it yeah i guess yeah. Like, like oh i want to do this and a lot of it does get shut down so hardcore by you know people or that don't believe oh nobody you can't talk nine, to animals and this and that there's a lot of those like out there nine times out of ten you ask somebody if they believe in ghosts and spirits they say oh you you won't believe me if i say yeah so you know they they kind of shut that off and they don't want to believe it because people are so negative towards it but we believe in all that stuff 100 percent. it's a very american thing mm. it's a very childish american it's not like that in other countries is it? immature point of view um no yeah. no it's not like that it's not like that. I mean, it's so not like that. If I'm in Holland or Portugal, they'll say, oh, did you see the spaceship last night? He landed on the Whoa. field. Switzerland, I had a brain surgeon that come up to me. Doctor. She said, my dog can teleport through a glass door. What? I said, what? I said, I know the cats can teleport. She said, no, no, I'll lock the sliding glass door. Dance barriers need to be here for this. The dog can go back and forth. And it's not unusual. Europe lives with this. Okay. Most of Europe and England, where you can't deny the house is haunted. Mm -hmm. Somebody turned yeah. the water on and turned the lights on and turned your TV off and they're stomping around. I oh. mean, all of your all of England is haunted. We lived in a house like that. So is it <laughs> is it something that's is you think it's something that's just government governmentally controlled here then? That in, they don't in, want us in America. To, in America. They want to kind of dumb us down from it. Do you think it's something that's uh because of I guess T V and social media and stuff like that 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 they want you to a lot of people are too embarrassed to admit that this is going on. What do you think that is here though? I hope that it will change now because of internet and podcasts okay i know that i was on the verge of getting my own show over and over and over for decades mm -hmm. and when it was controlled by the studios if you look at the kind of reality tv schlock yeah is the norm um i was constantly being dumbed down 
Okay. They wanted me to dumb down. And I can't. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I and I I won't. That's that's a good way to I be. I won't. And this is something that is is this is authentic. This is what pure love and and curiosity and yeah. and intellect and intelligence is what it's all about. Yeah. Because I know, like, uh, our one of our I grew up in a in a granite industry, and that everybody our foreman was from Mexico, and he's like, oh yeah, you know, my my brother, there's a actually a spaceship that accidentally crash landed like a couple hundred yards from his house and he's got pictures of it in mexico or yeah new mexico? in mexico 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 wow. and we're like what like no way he's like uh, like he's like yeah i'll get the pictures and then right away we're like no no no, no don't send that down here man we don't want that and yeah. it's almost like it's almost like there's fear instilled in us for not one to he see was, that he was gonna have his brother send the pictures and we we're like ah maybe not <laughs> so, hi I, I mean, it's just at the time, I don't know. It just it seems like it, so if something like that got into somebody's hands, then you're going to get in trouble. Oh, oh yeah. They, you, they're going to come after you. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's why I was saying, do you think maybe it's just governed here too much? Well, the question I ask about the whole Roswell thing, when it's, it's obvious that two, two grays were in a two-man pod uh -huh. taking samples and doing experiments and doing their work, as they do. The question is not... Did the aliens exist? The question is, what happened to their ship? Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. question is, what happened to the little gray ship? And that one of them would die and one of them was almost burned to death. What went wrong? That's the question. Yeah. No one ever talks about that. I think it was Bob Lazar, even. He's the one that said that when they found this, like the, when he was working on the spaceship, you know, Bob Lazar is correct. Mm -hmm. So he was saying that that, but he's like, this was from. He's like, they're like, was it the Roswell ship? And he's like, this was, I believe, from an archaeological dig. Yeah. He's like, I think that something I was researching was old technology to them. Oh. So ancient, like, ancient to them. Yeah, that's what he was talking but about. But to us, it was something we'd never seen before. When he, came, oh. when he went, when he went never public with the story. But, I mean, look what happened to him. They made it seem like this guy's just a wacko. Yeah, they made him sound like he was crazy. <laughs> yeah, but look who's making people sound crazy. Yeah. Stupid people. Yeah, media. And I'm not, I'm not but interested. But unfortunately, a lot of people believe what they say. <laughs> I'm not interested in the the lowest common denominator mm -hmm. of the intellect. That doesn't interest me at all. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I want to talk about the real thing. Yeah. That's what I'm Absolutely. saying. Huh? Like you're saying uh, spirits. I, you know, I've had, we've had encounters with our spirits. We've had encounters with UFOs and all that. But you're saying. Plenty of times. Other countries, they're so acceptable to it. I just want, I can't figure out why we're not. I Especially do. in Colorado. We, I mean, we grew up on what, 15 acres yeah. in the middle of nowhere. So we've seen, we've seen plenty of stuff out there that makes you curious, <laughs> curious about things. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So. I don't know if Americans are dumbed down or if there's some sort of taboo that we're not supposed to talk about it. Yeah. Cuz I mean I've had I've had cowboys come to my workshops. I have had police officers, sheriffs, I've had uh, all walks of life. Yeah, the 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 head of the mounted police in Washington DC. Wow. Flew to Chicago to take my workshop with horses last year. It's not that we don't know that it's true. Somebody has shamed us and told us we can't yeah. talk about yeah. it. That's what I said. You think we're just, it's almost like we're almost embarrassed to say, I, I encountered a spirit or, yeah. I but, think but something might have been trying to talk to. How are we going to grow into our next step, whatever that step is? If we, if we are going to get integrated with other off planet intelligence, mm -hmm. then we need to be able to be open to at least learning how to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. And learning how to telepath is the only game in town. Yeah. Whether it's an animal or a spirit or what if they what if they do land? What if they're the good guys? Yeah. The way they talk is telepathically. We know that already. We know that from the Roswell crap. Let me just talk my, about that. My grandfather says that he's um I've probably talked about this before for our listeners, but he's communicated with aliens before and he says that that's it was just silence. But it was peace, and they knew what was they were communicating. Full blown communications, you know. He was letting them know that they were scaring his daughter, and they were saying, you know, we didn't weren't trying to do that. We're sorry. What, what kind were they? Were they the little crays? No, he said they were. Uh, I forget what he called them. He said they were about eight feet tall and translucent. He said they were tall 
aliens. He said he thinks that because were they done. blonde like angels or were they blue? Um, I don't know. I never asked him that. Mm-mm. He said that they just had kind of a translucent vibe to them, and that's yeah. uh, something we should ask him. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Now I'm it's, curious. Where are they from? I didn't even ask him that. Uh-uh. I think I don't know. If I he think said, we were so immersed in just yeah. hearing about it. Because <laughs> at the time, this, this is back when I was younger and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I think Grandpa's losing his mind. You know, that's <laughs> just the mindset you have. Yeah. Of what you see, everybody else. Somebody says something like, "Oh, that guy's nuts." You know, you watch a good documentary on TV, and then at the end of you it, they're like, these, it. "These people are all nuts." You know, don't believe this. But that's that's learned behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely. what it was. The and shutdown is learned behavior. It was. I mean, the fact that Ancient Aliens is on the History Channel. <laughs> it's on the History Channel. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. yeah. And now it's become pretty commonplace. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone watches Ancient Aliens. Oh, yeah. I binge watch Ancient Aliens every <laughs> chance I get. I've seen them all like 10 times. I watch them over and over and over because now it's out there. Yeah. And there's no stopping it. Yeah. I'm going to have that. And I got a whole list of questions for Grandpa. I know, right? What were these? What was going on, man? I feel like he said they were the... Uh... It's not the Arcadian something Arcturians? else. Arcturians. 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 Yeah. Oh, Arcturian. my God, yes. Yeah, those are good guys. He said they were they yeah. were not bad. But no, he said there not. was a big being that was the center, and then there was they're not I think bad. four or two on each side or something but like here, that. But here here's what I, I I'm gonna challenge you about that. We have an opinion of what's good and what's bad. Okay. And I can tie this into Angela. Okay. <laughs> Angela actually was a psychic. I I'm the one who put on the seance. I'm the one who summoned the spirits. Yeah. I was just playing myself. Oh, wow. wow. I was playing myself. And I think that's also the reason that the, the popularity of the character is now so strong. They're making Legos out of me. I mean, <laughs> they're making <laughs> fun. What are those things called? Funko Pops? They're making, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's just everything. There's every, I don't have a Funko Pop yet. I have everything else. You need to get a Funko Pop. There's artwork Everybody and statues there. and T-shirts and toys and dolls. and I mean, there's everything. And now, now I've completely lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? Uh, the or the was it the Arturian. oh Arturians. I know what it was. Okay, this is the for instance. So let's say the little grays are going about their work. Mm-hmm. Now they're supposed to do what they're supposed to do. They're taking samples. They basically treat us the way we treat animals. Yeah, they're experimenting on us the way we experiment on animals. Mm-hmm. Boy, humans don't want it. Humans don't like karma. Oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> humans don't like that karma. Yes, we don't deserve to be scared. With all the animals that are being tortured in labs right now, yeah, we don't deserve to be scared. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and everything is a point of view. You may look at something and say it's beautiful, like your boa constrictor. Uh-huh. Someone else is going to look at it and say it's scary. Yeah. This does tie into the horror movies. I've got a whole chapter on the Black Mamba in my last book. And I talk about turning into a snake in Night of the Demons too. Yeah. Um, I can look at a Black Mamba and tell you that she's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I can tell you that she is one of the most dangerous snakes on earth. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that she's close enough to that if she strikes me, I... I'll go blind and paralyzed before I die. Yeah. And that she has every right to kill me if she wants to, because I'm in her house. Yeah. I'm in her territory. Yeah. So like you stated earlier, you're now learning from her. Exactly. Wow. And that shamanic journey with her, my relationship with fear, my relationship with death, at that moment when you have a black mama three feet from your face dancing in front of you, you're already dead. Yeah. So you're surrendering to the fact that she's already taken you into the other world. But some people are, I, I knew one woman who was afraid of songbirds. Really? She was scared to death of birds. She thought they'd get in her hair and scratch her eyes out. I know oh, wow. people that are scared to death of mice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, there's on the it's the end of the world. I know people that are scared of spiders. I'm terrified of spiders. And 
deathly, him and my wife both. <laughs> but you assign beauty. You assign meaning. Now, you somebody may look at a, a gray. Oh, they're so terrible. They're torturing us. It's so terrible, blah. And I'll say, what happened to little dude ship? There you go. How sad. Something went wrong. Something went really wrong. Yeah. They're wow. Trying, they, they, they're on stealth. We're not supposed to be able to see them. That something went really bad there. And my heart goes out to that little gray. Mm -hmm. Or let's say that they're some other alien like an animal, because I work with great white sharks. Oh, they're so scary. Now, that's some bullshit humans made up. I agree. Wow. You're more likely to have a tree fall on you and kill you than you are to get killed by a great white shark. Really? That's a fact. If you see them as more than just dangerous, I'm seeing them as beautiful and loving and playful, and they love their families, and they live in... I, I saw a world that no one else can see mm -hmm. of what sharks are really like, what they're really all about. And it's the same thing with the aliens. Just we've, we've decided they're ugly and we're scared of them. Yeah. Well, well, whose problem is that? It's not their, it's not their problem. And we, we better get over it because it is very likely that in this lifetime, we're going to have full disclosure. We're going to have contact. That's what I'm hoping and for. And they don't yeah. look like us. Yeah. And, and humans need to get over it. You know, I know. told him, I said, he's like, oh, this guy. I said, you know, there, I said, it's not a matter of if it or if it's just when. Yeah. And I said that I think the biggest problem is, is I said a lot of people do say like, oh, you know, well, if they're not, if they're real, then why can't we see them this and that? And I'm like, well, I mean, you got to ask yourself the question. If, if there was one standing in front of you, what would you do? How would you accept it? Yeah. Because I don't think, I think that 80% of the population wouldn't know how to handle that. No. And they, they can't even handle the coronavirus for crying out loud. Look what that put us into. They can't even handle a mouse in their kitchen Exactly. Cabinet. Exactly. Exactly. So how can they you can't handle... handle a spider in their <laughs> bathtub? How can you handle a nine foot translucent being yeah. that is talking to you without using words. Yeah. I, I don't think an, a lot of, I don't think 80 to 90% of the population would know how to handle it. Not in America anyways. And I feel like movies had a lot to do with that. Of, of putting the fear into people. Yeah. 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 See, we demonize the animals. Yeah. I think and so. we demonize the aliens. And there, there is also the possibility that they may be hostile and have their own agenda. That can happen too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Just like just like humans. Same thing. Exactly. We we didn't have any problem polluting and yeah. ripping this planet to shreds and decimating the animals. But boy, we have a problem when they want to do that to us. Yeah. yeah. I and it, it's too much of a double standard, isn't mm -hmm. it? Absolutely. Yeah. And they may want, they may need things for their atmosphere. They may need to mine the gold. They may need some of our genetics. They need DNA. They're trying to create a new species. Maybe they're going to upgrade the human being. Yeah. God willing, they will upgrade the human being. Yeah. Yeah. I think we desperately need an upgrade. Yeah. They need to desperately upgrade us before machines take over. Yes. Before machines <laughs> are the ones trying to upgrade. <laughs> AI is upgrade us. <laughs> <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> um, I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Okay. You guys can keep talking if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if not, we'll pause. Just let me know. I'll be right back. But no, yeah, the, this has been, this has been amazing. Honestly, this has been, this has been incredible. Definitely well, good time. Well, fantastic. Well, I'll, I'll plug a few plugs while I can. Cause okay. I, I, you said this is going to go out this coming week. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow I'm doing an event here in Vegas because it's one of the only places that's open. Yeah, okay. And by the time people hear this, it'll be too late for my nightmare toys. But mm -hmm. the following Saturday, I'll be in Granbury, Texas, and I'm signing books. So I wrote six books. Uh, one is a children's novel. Okay. Oh, wow. Awesome. And most of them are about communicating with animals. I mean, they all are, one way or another. Mm -hmm. And... Psychic communication and connecting to something that's strong and beautiful and powerful and loving and comforting and it's is nature. Yeah. 
it's God and its nature. Mm -hmm. I like to call it God slash Mother Nature mm -hmm. because it's just one creator. Yeah, and all yeah. of her, his creations. Um, I've got an online school, so okay. that's on. It, it's called Language and Miracles Institute. If people go to languageofmiraclesinstitute dot com. I'll Language have, of Miracles? Yeah. Okay. Languageofmiraclesinstitute.com. I've got upcoming webinars. There's an ongoing series called the Devotional Program. Okay. Students from all over the world. All over the world. You get 52 audio lessons. Oh, wow. And 365 texts to your phone. Wow, that's amazing. Affirmations for you and your animal. Another 365 for you and your soul. That's incredible. So I'm trying to create content that you can watch at your leisure mm -hmm. whenever you feel like it mm -hmm. because everyone's on a different time yeah, frame yeah, around absolutely. the world. Or schedule. or. And then when we have the webinars, I'll start a new series. I'll do a Christmas show. So okay. anybody that's going to log on to Language and Miracles Institute, you're going to see free kit. Okay. That first lesson's called Bamboo. If they click on that, they're going to hear the first lesson. If they like it, they can get in the devotional program. I just slashed 400 bucks off it. So it's it's really, really reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. And the Christmas webinar will be prayers. Okay. For animals and for people okay. that need prayers. People can You can send in pictures. And I'll be praying for your animals and your people that need help. And for the world at large. Awesome. And then in January, I'll start a new webinar series. So okay. in that webinar, I'll show a picture of an animal. Then I'll teach you how to read that animal. Oh, and wow. You'll be on with my students in Switzerland and England. Oh, that's and cool. South America and Australia, I mean, and New Zealand, I mean, everybody, all at what it is phenomenal because that's really establishing that community, that archangel community, so that mm -hmm. you know you're not alone. And if you don't practice, you're not going to get better. Uh huh. Wow. <clears throat> so, a lot of the other, uh, do you do a lot of like a, you learn a lot of this through like meditation and stuff like that as well. Yeah. So it's, we're going to have a lot of meditation and, and things like that in it. If you're going to get anything new into your brain, uh -huh. you can't just run what's always been running. Okay. If you're so obsessed with what you already know and what you think you know, how's anything new going to slip in there? Yeah. We that. have to turn the obsessive thought process off and take in some new ideas. And the new ideas are really nourishing and loving and powerful and funny. I mean, a lot of funny things happen. Yeah. Animals are funny. Yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, you, you cannot get in a conversation with a creature that eats cat shit and not laugh. <laughs> I mean, they do. They do. I mean, one time I was I was at the Unity Church delivering the ministries in Atlanta. Uh -huh. And the news came out, and I'm on live news. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about opening your heart and sending bridges of light and receiving quantum information and being able to love unconditionally and connecting to angels and the earth and grounding yourself and going into this space of peace and love and joy and hope mm -hmm. with us, nothing but harmony and goodness. And we're connecting to this dog. And I asked the whole group in the audience, What's his favorite food? Imagine that your mouth is filled with something that's just delicious to you. <laughs> and I look around the audience and here are these church ladies. And they're sitting there in their, you know, hats and pantyhose and Atlanta church ladies, like a bunch of little sausages. And they start going, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm watching them. And one of them raises her head. Oh, she goes, no. Well, it's brown and sticky, but I don't know what it is. Oh, no. <laughs> and another one's going, well, it's chewy and dark color, but I don't know what it is. 
And then, I mean, we're in a church. Oh, yeah. no. And a woman raises her hand and she says, why do dogs eat cat shit? <laughs> <laughs> And another woman says, well, I call them nutty buddies because mine just fishes them right out of the cat box. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, they're, they're funny. Yeah. 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 They, How do you not laugh at that? Yeah. Did you start laughing? Yeah, I, th I, I think I had to. I, I don't think I could keep <laughs> a straight face. There's no way around that to not no laugh. No way. No. Oh, That's man. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome yeah this <laughs> sorry i gotta get my composure after that all right i'm, I'm gonna continue to plug let me think about the plugs yeah she's uh all right, where, she's am I, where am i gonna okay. be yeah. where am i gonna be um let's see january there's a pop-up in houston so i'll be at this pop-up and February, I'm hoping to get Mad Monster in Charlotte. We're talking right now. Mad Monster? Mad Monster Convention. Okay. In April, I'll be in Days of the <coughs> Dead in Chicago. Mm -hmm. In March, I hope to be at the Showboat in Atlantic City in New Jersey. Okay. So whenever there is a convention that's open, we're in masks, we're distanced, there's hand sanitizer everywhere. And I I will be there greeting fans. I mean, we're they're not gonna be huge the way the conventions usually are. Yeah. Can you use a license? Yeah. They might be like a fourth of the capacity. Okay. But I also think one of the important parts of keeping the coronavirus at bay is being happy. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. Your immune system responds to joy. Yeah. And you can't just hide in your house and be paranoid. No, absolutely not. It's not no. good. It's not good for you. That's what I say. Like whether the masks, whether the masks work or not, do whatever we got to do. But I, I mean, I, I think that your mental state is going to be your strongest defense against this thing. Absolutely. Very well said. That's for, right. For anybody, you know, and a lot of these people that, are just locking themselves up and par constantly paranoid about it. And then, you know, they get angry at the people that don't want to wear the mask and they do this, but it's like, you know, it, it, to a certain extent, I get it. Yes. That whatever the scientists say we have to do, then you should, you know, listen to them. I get that. But you know, for some people you, you're like, Oh, they don't, they don't want to wear a mask or complaining about it. This and that. Then it's like, well, I mean, that's they're, at least they're trying to stay like kind of positive and strong in their own mindset. I guess to a certain extent, that's good. That's yeah. what I feel. Mm hmm. But I mean, I, I feel that sitting at home and being scared and then every time you go out, that's only going to make your once you're not mentally strong. Yeah. And you're just terrified in public. You're yeah. vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Oh, yeah. It's almost like getting, you know, they say that's the, you're saying earlier, that's the easiest way to get a possession is when you're vulnerable or you yeah. allow that. You, yeah. You're so scared of it that you allow it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's kind of how the how a virus works. Uh, oh yeah, of course. When you be, keep telling yourself, Oh, I'm I I think I'm I'm getting sick, you know, I feel mm -hmm. sick, you're gonna get sick. Mm -hmm. The whole mind, the brain is powerful. The yeah. mind is powerful. Absolutely. If you tell yourself, I'm gonna get sick, I'm gonna get sick, I'm gonna die out there, and then chances are you're probably not gonna be very strong against it. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it's like getting behind the wheel of the car saying, I'm gonna have a wreck, I'm gonna have a wreck, I'm gonna have a yeah. wreck. Yeah, I'm gonna wreck. Well, you trust me, you are. Yeah. You will. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we have to try to try to go forward with things that make us happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think if anything, this has really made people think about what's important and your own mortality. What do I What do I need to accomplish? What did I come ha down here to do? Yeah. Yeah. What's my place? I need to do it. Get on with it because we might not be here much longer. Yeah. Yeah. That's. This podcast was something we kind of started for fun. And then like, as we start bringing people on, it just keeps getting deeper and deeper for us. And every podcast hits us in a different way. And like, yeah, having you on the podcast for one is like, it's just opened our mind up so much more towards new things already. And I could, I could see his wheels turning, my wheels are turning, but you know, and it's every time we do it, we just keep learning more and more and more. And like, it's, uh, 
I feel like I'm getting more mentally strong from it almost. You oh, know? absolutely. Yeah. Like, like, like to be completely honest, just talking to you and the not, not to sound corny amount of time that we have, you've completely changed my thought process on multiple things. So thank you for that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, so, it's, it's energizing. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of felt you out before mm -hmm. I thought, am I really going to drive across Vegas and go do this podcast? And I, I came in a day early. So yeah. mm -hmm. I thought, well, mm -hmm. And you said, well, won't go out in time to promote what I came to do, but there's some, there's some life force. Also, you know, we're speaking truth. We're talking yeah. about yeah. things that are true and we're sharing power. Yeah. And the people that watch it and listen to it, I hope they're also filled with power, with hope and power because we're going to be okay. Yeah. I mean, what we've been considering the normal state of affairs might change really dramatically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we came for the party. Yeah. That's why we're here. We're not vic we're not being victimized by anything that's yeah. happening. We came for the apocalypse. I'm here for the showdown. I wouldn't miss this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't miss this for anything. And that's why you're here. Yeah. You came to help when the earth needs the help the most. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not a victim. And I think that that's also what people are addicted to. Oh, yeah. On both oh, God, sides yes. of the politics. I'm a victim. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's doing this. Or yeah. I'm a victim. And, and so they're, I, I mean, you can't both be victims. Yeah. Yeah. If whoever you wanted to get win the presidency just won, shouldn't you be happy? Oh yeah. God, no! They yeah. got to be now that now that you won, you got to be mad at the other person. Yeah, none of it makes any sense. It doesn't. Absolutely it doesn't make no any sense. sense at all. Nobody's being victimized here. We came here for this event. Yeah. If you're being victimized, you're victimizing yourself. Yep. It's a global transformation, mm -hmm. and we have to figure out, even if it's a very small thing. What thing can I do? Yeah. What small thing can I do today to help make this world a better place? If everybody did that, we could turn all this around. Yeah. If and, everybody was on board with it. And no one has to go. And, you know, that my students even, who I think are brilliant and the most amazing people in the world. Well, what about this? But that and this and the dog trade and this and the, oh, this and blah, 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 blah. And the... The oceans are polluted and the lab animals are in the factory, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And you can overwhelm yourself and make up excuses to do nothing. Yeah. It's all so terrible. <laughs> I can do anything. Everyone has some small part to play. Yeah. And if each one of us would get real clear on what are my talents and gifts, how can I contribute? Maybe somebody is going to help me with my website for my, you know, for my charity. Maybe somebody has money. So maybe somebody doesn't. Maybe they're better at marketing. Um, maybe somebody else is better at fundraising and they can go to some big company and say, these children need computers. They need, you know, every, everyone has a way to help. Uh -huh. Yeah. And if we were busy helping we wouldn't be sitting around being armchair critics complaining. Yeah. 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 You don't hear like, me complaining. No. And I I'm, feel like even if you help, say you help one person, that can cause that person to go on and help somebody else. And that can that's right. cause a chain reaction. And you can change, you can change a lot of stuff like that. And it also just changes how you feel about yourself at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you stopped with that one homeless woman, holding her baby and said, well, how'd you get here? What do you need? What yeah. can I do for you? You're going to have a good day. Yeah. You're going to feel better about yourself because you help somebody. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's just that simple. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, like for starting the podcast for us, it's been, cause I mean, our band we had we were from a band originally and we did get signed and stuff like that but we never got big or anything you know we were it was quick and done we still have a band you know we still play music and stuff but when we started up this podcast it was kind of like one of those things it was like eh, 
you know, there's really nothing going on. Let's kind of throw something together. Something completely new for for him and I. So We didn't want to do video blogs and stuff like that. So we're like, let's podcast, you know, our mom, our family, everybody kept telling us like, you guys are funny. You should do this. You should do that. So we years and years went by. We never did anything. And then finally we're like, you know what? We sat down. We're like, let's start a podcast. None of us have ever recorded. Neither one of us has. None of us has ever edited a video. None of us has ever talked. I'm, I can't even call the pizza joint and order a pizza still. But I was like, let's do it. Let's, you know, let, let's just make it happen. So we did that. And since that's happened, I mean, like it's, it's changed, I think, my outlook and your outlook so much. Oh, yeah. And now it's, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, we, we've had people on here that are, you know, all for America and Trump and we're for, you know, America. And we were, I, I honestly, like the, lo- the deeper we've gotten into this, the more people we talk to is when we started this podcast, it was funny. Everything was Trump 2020, this, that. Now hardly even talk about it. You know, we've had people on here that now I don't care who you support. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So from just talking and sitting here and having an open conversation. And we've had, we, we had Dan Sperry on a magician who talked about, he was, you know, he doesn't believe in e- either side of, of politics and talking with him about stuff, you know, just different aspects really changes your perspective on, on everything. And since then, I feel like it is mentally have gotten so much stronger mm-hmm. from something so little, you know. And from coming from really nothing, like we, we weren't, we weren't anybody. Nobody knew who we were. We, you know, why, why would, for everybody out there, I grew up terrified of this lady sitting before me. <laughs> that picture right <laughs> there. If you, know the Angela, TV. if you know Angela, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I still have a hard time looking her dead in the eyes and not kind of getting the chills. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Good. for that. I, know. I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I'm saying. I am here right now and I am having, I mean, I don't know. It, it's it's like, it's a heart to heart to everybody that sits in the studio with us and has really just changed my outlook on the world. It's changed my outlook on people, the spiritual to, to, world. To, to, be, to be somebody, for, for you to be somebody that terrified us as kids and we're he- sitting here with you right now talking about. <laughs> communicating with animals and aliens and spirits and stuff like that is amazing. And we never thought we'd and have that, this opportunity. And that's at that point in time, none of it matters. It doesn't matter what you believe in, who you support. We're all the same. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and, and th- I feel like since we've started this, I've learned that it doesn't matter what your beliefs are. If you're gay, straight, yeah, whatever it may be, you are, we're all the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody is one being and we all end up in the same place. Yep. Wow. Well, I I posted once on the Facebook page. Um, And so if if people want to find me, they can go to Facebook. They can go to Instagram. They can go Mm -hmm. to AmeliaKinkade.com. They can go to Language and Miracles Institute. Mm -hmm. Hopefully get in the webinars so that we can continue these conversations. Yeah. Um, If we have a president who is not pro-environment, The next generation of children are going to rebel against it and continue to find ways to save the planet. Yeah. If we have a president who is pro-planet, the children are going to be encouraged and inspired and they're going to find ways to save the planet. What's going to happen is the same outcome. Yeah. It doesn't matter what inspires the change. The fact if the matter is the change has to come. Yeah. So there are all sorts of changes that need to happen in order to have this many people living in harmony on this planet. Mm -hmm. Now that's the goal for me. It's also living in harmony with the animals and cohabitating with the animals on this planet. Mm -hmm. Um, The changes that need to be made full swing. It's already happening. And yeah. nothing can stop it. I agree. Nothing can stop it. And by virtue of the fact that we're here having this conversation, what what it means is that we came to get this done. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing to be angry about and there's no reason to play the victim. Yeah. That's just wasting time. And it's wasting so much precious energy that you could use helping people, being creative applying your talents and your intellect in doing a way that your part doing your part doing your part oh man <laughs> next time she comes Two birds on in one stone. ladies and gentlemen we will have the angela discussion 
<laughs> but yeah, for yeah, we'll do that on the Great. next one. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for taking some time. Yeah, and absolutely. Coming down here, and uh, this is uh, this was an absolute pleasure for sure. And it's gone a lot. It's it's so much deeper than I thought it was going to be. I'll be honest. Yeah. And this podcast was great. So incredible. Uh, had a lot of fun. And thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. It was really, really a pleasure. Awesome. Well, we'll uh, give a little toast to everybody out there that watches. Cheers. 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 Cheers, cheers here. And everybody, we'll uh, see you next time.